Hey guys, so this is a lithium iron phosphate 48 volt server rack battery. This is the cheapest 48 volt server rack battery I can find on the market. So we're gonna look through these the specs. I'm even going I'm gonna do a capacity test on this. I'm even gonna put it in the freezer for a couple days and then see how it see how it handles that as well. So let's get started. So I do have an affiliate link for this battery in the description and I'm working on getting the viewers a discount code. So I'll also have that in the description as well if I'm able to get it. So if you use that link, if you wanna support the channel and you like the content. Okay, so this this can handle uh, 7,000 deep discharge and charge cycles. If I did discharge this every single day, that would be like 19 years worth. So I'm gonna put this in my RV. So I'm hoping that it lasts 19 years, but we'll see about that. 19 years, I'll give you an update. So we'll just go through some of the specs here. So it has a max charging constant current of 100 amps, max constant discharge current of 100 amps, a charging range 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, optimal storage range 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 113. BMS charging parameters won't let you charge over 58.4 volts. Uh, BMS has a cutoff of 40 volts. Here's how you turn it on and off. This is also the breaker switch as well. So notice you turn on the breaker and then this little switch is for the BMS. So you turn them on and off at the same time. Can't do them separate. Here's two RJ45 ports. This battery comes with some little cables. This, this one will hook into this left side. It'll speak to your inverter charge controller. I'm gonna be using a GrowWatt 3000 watt all-in-one inverter. I'll have a review on that later. It also comes with this little cord, allows you to plug in here, and then you can plug this side into your computer, download a program, and you can monitor uh, each cell. If you have multiple batteries in a server rack, you can assign them an individual number. If you're only using one battery, you just put all the um, switches to the down position. S little state of charge indicator. You got some little plastic clips that cover this. They don't, they come off really easy, so they don't do too much. Dimensions are just over six inches high. I'm seeing 17 and three eighths inches wide, and about 18 and a half long. Notice there's no screen on this battery, but you can hook this cord up to your inverter charge controller and it'll talk to to that and it'll display its, its uh, charge uh, percentage and some other little details. Or you can hook up a smart shunt, which is what I'm going to do to monitor the battery. Weighs in at just over 100 pounds. Comes with these sturdy handles. I believe these rails here are for connecting to your server rack. Wow, this looks really nice in here. Look how organized that is. That is amazing. This is the 48 volt version. So these are the cells that are in the SOK battery, from what I understand. And these are uh, welded on, on there. So see how they have this little arch here? I think that's to help with the expanding and contracting. So we'll see if that helps when we freeze these things. So I've got four temperature sensors. So here's the pre-charge resistor. So when you hook up to your uh, inverters, you won't uh, blow, blow like capacitors and things. This all looks really good in here. Looks so good. Okay, just looking at these cells, it doesn't look like any of them are expanded. They all look pretty good. We'll see what they look like when, once they're frozen though. Let's go ahead and run its, the initial capacity test. Now I'll show you what I have here. Installed a Vic, Victron Smart Shunt to monitor the power output. I have another video on that. Hooking that up, it was pretty easy. First time using it. And it's gonna be using my GrowWatt 3000 uh, watt all-in-one inverter. And I'm just gonna be running this heat gun. I think I'll just run it on low setting. So I just charged this to 100% and it was showing uh, 50, 54 volts. And that's the float charge according to the manual. And then the BMS will run down to 40 volts. So I'm just gonna let it run down to 40 volts 
and see how much watt hours uh, we have consumed using my uh, Smart Shunt app. All right, so about six hours later and it stopped. It looks like it only discharged uh, five kilowatt hours worth of energy and the battery, the minimum voltage that I ever saw was 40 volts. So this inverter is uh, programmed to turn off right at 40 volts and the BMS turns off right at 40 volts. I wonder if this thing was pulling so many was pulling uh, so many watts that it just shut off a little bit early. I've seen other tests where they, they do get the full, they get over 100%, but this one's actually 97% according to my test. Okay guys, so like I said earlier, I'm going to put this thing in my RV and we're in Utah and it freezes every winter. And uh, I don't want to be hauling this 100 pound battery. I don't want to be digging it out of my RV, bringing it in the house every winter back and forth. So I want to see how it does when it freezes solid. And if it's if it's going to be degraded um, after it freezes and dethaws, and I want to see if the cells are going to expand, maybe some of the welds are going to break inside there. Three degrees in here. Okay, moment of truth. Oh my gosh, this is so heavy. Okay. Yes, it shuts. Okay guys, it's been a total of two days. It's 32 degrees, about 30 degrees out here, outside in my garage, but it's zero degrees in here. Let's check it out. Oh gosh. Let's look inside right here. Okay. Quick inspection, it looks, doesn't look like there's been any expansion. Not that I can tell, anyways. It all looks pretty good. I'm just gonna check these welds. Hey guys, all the welds seem pretty good. These straps are still in place. Doesn't seem like there's anything visibly wrong. Looks good, looks good to me. So, they have these temperature sensors on these batteries so that you don't charge it when the battery is frozen. But I can't say that I totally trust that because the battery sensors are on the top and if I had my solar panel hooked up, the sun comes out, starts warming up the air, my battery's totally frozen, and then the top of the battery gets above, gets above freezing and then it starts charging and my battery, the inside of my batteries are still frozen, that would cause damage to my battery. So I can't say I totally trust that. Trust the battery sensors. The battery sensors would literally have to be like in between these cells, which are, which are already tight. There's no room for a battery sensor in there. So I can't say that I would recommend them doing anything different than what they've done. But for peace, but for peace of mind, I'm during winter time, I'm just going to be more careful and I'm just gonna switch my solar panels off. What do you think about that? I don't think the temperature sensor is foolproof to prevent damage to your battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this inside. I'm gonna let it thaw out. It's a good looking battery though. Looks so good in there. guys good morning it's been a full day and then a full night so this thing should be totally thawed out yeah two hours after I brought the battery inside there was some serious condensation on this thing uh, not much you can do about that just uh, just what happens when something's cold and it gets warm but I'm glad I didn't turn it on when it was that wet I don't know what would have happened so I'm just gonna bring this thing up to charge 100% so we can discharge it. We'll see how much power it has. Turning it on, hopefully nothing broke. Good. 
Okay, so I have this communication cable up to my grow watt, and the battery is telling the grow watt that it, uh, it's at 100% charged. And the, it's not charging anymore, so we should be in a good spot. We can discharge this down to uh, 40 volts, which is, which is where the BMS will turn off power. So hopefully we can get the full uh, discharge capacity. All right, here's my test. I got it running. Running my air dryer. Oh, on 1.6 kilowatts. That is a lot of power. So just been, it's just turned off. It was running for like two and a half hours. Outputting uh, like 1600 watts. So it's like running a microwave for two and a half hours. A big microwave. And it's not hot at all, which is awesome. Guys, as you can see, it discharged five kilowatt hours again. I don't want to make this video too long, but I was able to charge it, uh, charge it up again and discharge it a third time, and I was able to get 5.1 kilowatt hours. During that test, I removed the BMS and I charged it with user-defined charge settings, and I think it got a little more energy into the battery that way. That's what was able to get me the full discharge. So my third test, I did get a full discharge of the uh, 5.12 uh, kilowatt hours. And so I don't think this thing was affected at all from freezing it, so that's good. It looks great, it's got really good cells in there. I can't complain. So thanks for watching, what did you think? If you have any questions for me, put them in the comment. If you have any questions on the product, I'll work on getting, I'll try, do my best to answer those or research and find an answer for you. Uh, if you want to see this hooked into my uh, hooked up to my RV, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I should have a video on that uh, coming up in the spring. Thanks a lot. Bye.